All right, welcome back to the channel. Today, we've been asked a lot to see the machines running. So we recorded a time lapse today, and we're gonna actually talk through and explain what the machines are doing, what the guys are doing. So we're excited to show you guys. And I don't know everything that's going on, so I'll interject some questions. But if you want us, I literally just showed up today and set up the camera. And so if you want a different angle or different time lapse video, just let us know and we'll try to do our best to make a response. Let's jump into the time lapse. Let's go. So what's going on? So I think this was right as lunch was getting over. So you don't see too many guys. You're going to see them start coming in. Here we go. So if you look at the little edge bander there, they're working on some painted parts. So those were actually cut on the beam saw that's behind that little edge bander. Um, those are for a little punch uh, job um, that a customer needed. So we cut those all out on the beam saw. So what camera's doing right now is edge banding them and they're being sent down the return conveyor. So he's doing all four sides. And so that return conveyor makes it super convenient to uh, get the parts back and be able to edge band them. So and then it looks like someone's using the vertical so that's for like secondary type operations usually, but if they cut the stuff on the beam saw and didn't do like a nested operation, would they also be potentially doing something for the backside or is that a different job altogether? So it just depends. That, what he was working on there was his drawer blanks. So he cut the blanks to size on the saw and then he was putting the dados in them on there getting them prepped for this job. You can see all this white melamine flying through the edge bander right now. And that's actually being cut on the CNC's. So this is kind of going to be a cool video because we have two different really things that we're working on today. Um, cabinet parts, which is what you're seeing right now. And then we have painted parts, which we, you'll see a little bit more of in a minute. But you can see those, those um, cabinet parts are coming. All the white parts come through the bander. And then uh, Steven, he's the guy in the middle kind of organizing them. Once he gets a full cabinet, he actually brings them over to the to the rollers you see on the left side, those are completed cabinets. And you'll watch them kind of disappear, move just a little bit. So assembly's down, you can't see them in this video, but they're down there assembling that job as it's being cut, really trying to keep a lean process. So this is the one piece flow that we talked about in the video earlier what that saved you $3 million because now you're more organized, more structured and getting cabinet boxes done and out the door rather than on pallets and just everywhere. Yeah, so before they would um, put all the cabinet parts on that roll line that you see kind of just to the right of the middle of the screen, and then they would have pallets there. They would stack those cabinets on pallets. We would roll them over to another area. They would sit there until they're ready to be assembled. Now we don't even start cutting the job until it's time to assemble it. And so we save tons and tons of square footage that way. So on the roller that is in the middle of the screen, it looks like there's carpet squares. And I saw that when I was walking around today. What, like, what's the purpose of the carpet squares? So that is our paint buffer roller. And so they actually put those carpet squares on when they sand their parts. They put those carpet squares so they don't get scratched from the wheels. So this is, gonna, this is kind of a working process. We're going to be moving this around, but we got to move a dust collector and a few things. Um, you can see they just brought another roller in, but you'll see them put painted parts on them and scoot them into the paint shop. So eventually that'll go straight through into the paint shop so we don't have to move things back and forth. So that roller that's on wheels right now will just go directly into the paint shop. It will. Yep, that's correct. So. And then we've got all the CNC's all the CNC machines running plus the Intel store feeding them. What else is going on here? I guess those are the painted parts that they're working on right now. Yep, so you see Cameron, he's in the middle there. He's sanding some of the painted parts after he edge painted them. Um, we did just put, we'll have to do a video on this, but we just put a, a couple of different sanders on the CNC and we're able to sand parts on the CNC as well. So, so right. is that just like a different bit or is that kind of a C-axis type thing? We have one CX sander, which we'll talk about that and show that in, in the future. And then we have another sander plus one on the way that we can run on any of our machines even without the C-axis. And it really acts as an orbital sander. That's cool. So, so yeah, sometimes we're able, like Cameron was doing that by hand because all the routers were being used. But he could have put those on the CNC and had the CNC sand them. How, like, why is running it that way better than just getting, like, a robot? arm that'll do the sanding 
So it, it, it depends on your bottlenecks, right? And so, you know, in lean, you always want to use your head, not your wallet. So those robot sanders are amazing. Um, and I would expect that one day we will have one. But right now, after we added the IntelliStore, we don't use the full capacity of our CNCs. We don't, we don't need to run them solid all day long. And so we can use the capacity on the CNCs to sand where eventually we'll have to cut so many parts, then we'll want to do an offline sander. But right now it doesn't make sense to do that. Whereas in the future when we need to add more capacity, it will. So now it looks like they're just kind of wrapping up for the day, cleaning up. Yep. There's not many cabinets around. Nope. They pretty much built that entire job. And then you can see on those rollers, right, kind of straight in the middle of the screen toward the bottom, those painted parts are pretty much ready to go into the paint booth. So they'll go in tomorrow. So with like, so I set up the camera on a dust collector and you said mm -hmm. you're moving dust collectors. Are you moving all of the dust collectors? Every dust collector will get moved eventually. We're going to put most of them outside in some sheds. How so, many dust collectors do you have right now? Um, we have four. And so all four are going to be changed. Because one of the questions or comments that was in the comments of a video was that it it appeared that you, there's a lot of wasted overhead space, but your building is 16 at the peak and 12 at the edges. Mm -hmm. Do you like you do have like a little mezzanine area kind of in the center part of the building? Yeah. But do you feel that it's even possible to utilize some of that overhead space because of like the machines and the ducting and stuff that you have? Like, yeah. So in the machine area, and you can kind of see in the video, the ducting has to go above the the IntelliStore. And the IntelliStore is, I think, about 13 feet high. And then I have to have the pipes running above that. So as far as utilizing space above the machinery, there's no space above the machinery. We have to have that height for the dust pipe. Um, we You have to have the dust pipe high enough, too, above the machines that you can get flex in your, in your hoses so they can move around correctly. So in the machine area, no. We thought about maybe adding some mezzanine space above in the assembly area, kind of where you were talking, extending that mezzanine out for uh, maybe putting some custom areas up top or some different things. So that may happen in the future. But, but currently, um, that would only have to go down the, be able to go down the center of the building because the rest of the building's too short at the 12 feet, but right in the center it's possible. Got it. I think that pretty much kind of sums up this video. Kind of a, this was a half day. I came in about noon and dropped it off. So this was about a half day's worth of work. Um, is this a common, like, busyness? Was this kind of slow? Like, how would you rate? I would say day? it was kind of a medium day. They had, they ran one cabinet job and a whole bunch, like three or four painted jobs. Um, today, so we're really trying to focus on getting parts to our paint area right now, where um, cabinets, the cabinet side, we're we're doing pretty good. Plus, we have some offline fixtures that we're building as well that were run last week that they're building. So we really we have plenty for the assembly team to do. So we're trying to get paint caught up. Got it. All right. Well, like I said, if you want to see a different time lapse, let us know. We're happy to try to get that footage and answer more questions along the way. Yeah. Enjoy the video. We'll see you next time.